for $80. <laughs> it better make me look like Natalie Portman. Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to be filming a first impressions video. I wanna be testing out a bunch of new makeup and letting you guys know just like my first thoughts on everything that I try. I've got the new ColourPop Tinted Moisturizer and the So Jaded Palette from Kathleen Lights in ColourPop. I've got some Hourglass products and a bunch of new stuff. Okay, it's not a full face, but I don't think most of you really care, so let's go. So I'm gonna start off with the ColourPop stuff. This is the HA Primer. So I know that every time I use a primer, you guys are like, Christian Primer, and I'm like, I know, but you know, sometimes you just gotta try new shit. I already moisturized my face with the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. I think maybe I'll just use the primer on half my face to see. This is what we're working with. Okay. Oh. Scented. What's that smell? That's uh, coconut. It's a hyaluronic acid primer. Known to hydrate and support healthy looking skin with hyaluronic acid. Known to support hydration and skin softness with coconut water. All products are dermatologist tested, gluten free, paraben free, and vegan. The primer is $10. There's gonna be a setting spray that I'm gonna use that's $10. And then the tinted moisturizer is $12. So not bad, really decent prices. Very scented. I'm not a huge fan of how scented that product is. I kind of wish it was more like basic. I'm not a fan of fragrance in my skincare at all. I know it's not good for the skin. It's it's not overly like sickening smelling, but it's really strongly scented like coconut. So if that bothers you, this may bother you. I can't say if this is gonna be like amazing or not, but just upon applying it to my face, it feels like it synced in hydrating and it's kind of sticky. So that's a thing. HA Setting Mist is another one of them. So this one I imagine is a setting spray. It says directions shake well and close eyes mist directly onto skin. Use after makeup or mist throughout the day as needed. A microfine refreshing setting mist that hydrates for healthy looking skin. All right, let's see what the sprayer on this sec has like. I like the color of it. It's really like a satisfying milky color. Oh, smells very similar. It's a nice fine mister on that sucker. I really enjoy the color of those. You guys like that too? Is that as satisfying to you as it is to me? Now let's go in with the new ColourPop Pretty Fresh HA Tinted Moisturizer. So this I actually had sent to me from ColourPop before it was announced, which was really exciting. They reached out to me and told me that they were going to send it to me beforehand. Did I get a chance to try it beforehand? No, sorry, Colourpop. <laughs> I appreciate you though. It says here, more skin, less cake. Hyaluronic acid and coconut water hydrate skin. Sheer buildable coverage evens skin tone. The result, healthy, hydrated, fresh skin with 24 shades, you'll find the perfect match. So it says here, quick tip, N is neutral undertones, W is warm undertones. Okay, so it looks like it doesn't come in any cool undertones. It's just neutral or warm. It comes in 22 shades. And I said in my Florence by Mills video about her skin tint that she launched, I was like, oh, that's not a very good shade range. And so many of you guys in the comments were like, when it's a tinted moisturizer, less shades is fine because it is such light coverage that it doesn't matter to have such a large shade range. Like for the pure foreign one, because it is such high coverage, then you do need more shades. I don't know, I never really thought of it that way, but that does make a lot of sense. It does look like there is a good range of fair, light, medium, medium dark, dark and deep dark. So that's cool, I like that. I don't know what shade I'm gonna be, probably something like this. This is the shade Light 7W. We'll see, I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like here. This is, okay. It doesn't have a scent, I don't think. No, no scent in that, so that's really good. So let's see what we're working with here. I'm gonna try with a brush on one side and I'm gonna try it with a sponge on the other. I think this shade is all right for me. Not perfect, but. Whatever it is. So since it's a tinted moisturizer, apparently it's supposed to be like pretty light coverage buildable. Oh, okay. I would completely agree with that. Very light coverage. I already did my brows, which is why they look so, so dark. I just wanted to have them done before filming because I didn't have a new brow product to use. Okay. It's very, very hydrating. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's like glowy. Let's try it on the other side with a sponge and see. I have a feeling for some reason this one's gonna apply better with a sponge. I don't know why I feel that way. This is a side that has primer. Okay, well, my feeling was absolutely wrong. It literally just soaked up all, everything. Like there's just nothing on that side. Maybe I'll try this side then with my fingers and see if I can rub it in like I did the Florence by Mills stuff. 
I feel like a lot of people would use a tinted moisturizer more with their hands, you know? So it does sort of feel like a skincare item. It doesn't really feel like a foundation. Oh dear. I'm not crazy about this so far at all, but let's just see. I'm gonna apply it with the brush because I feel like the brush was the best application that we were able to get. See how it's accentuating all the hairs on my face? I had a heating pack on my face all day yesterday. So my face is really red and burned on this side. If you guys are wondering why it looks just like ultra red, that's why. It's a good day to see if we get any coverage out of this whatsoever. Whatsoever. It feels heavy on my skin. It feels like, oh no, real makeup y. Okay, so all I can speak to is my first impression on this. I am not a fan. It's just not for me. I feel like everybody has different preferences and opinions on what they like. This to me feels very, it feels like kind of thick, but like sticky. It's almost like, okay, when I use that Fenty hydrating foundation and I tested it out in the first impressions, I'll link it up here. And it just felt like too oily and too hydrating. I'm getting that with this right now. I could see, okay, so situations I could see this working good in. Really good skin, really light coverage, and you're just looking just to even out sort of the, the color on your skin over like a summertime. For me, and this is like no shade to ColourPop, I love ColourPop, but it feels like this came out at a really weird time. Like if this launched early summertime, it would have been a staple in everyone's collection because then everyone would be using like that more light coverage, fresh faced look. But I feel like in this time of year, we do tend to go a little more full coverage, a little more heavy on the makeup because we're like in the fall and like the warm tones and everybody wants to like that flaw, you know what I'm talking about? So to launch this in fall feels a little bizarre to me. I feel like it should have been launched at least six months ago. So if you are looking for like a very, very light coverage, I would 100% call this light. I wouldn't call this even like the, the higher spectrum of light. I would say this is a very light coverage, but I was able to cover my redness in a lot of the areas, but you can still see it peeking through. But I think I'm going to turn the lights down and show you guys up close what my skin looks like. Because from far away like this, you're like, you're probably like, bitch, what are you talking about? Just up close, it looks very makeup-y. Do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, you absolutely can see. I exfoliated my skin and did moisturizer before this, but you can see just how makeup-y it looks in this area, especially my upper lip area. Oh, it just, it's like accentuating the dryness almost. Oh, my forehead doesn't look too bad, but specifically right here. Oh God in heaven, how it be. Not good. So I'm gonna use the ColourPop No Filter Concealer, which you guys know is my favorite concealer. I love it so much. And I am gonna conceal my under eyes and prime my lids. I don't know, man. I'm so surprised. I really thought I would love it. Like when I saw it come in the mail and ColourPop talked to me about it, I was like, yeah, that's gonna be my jam. Like I know I'm gonna like a lighter skin day. Or when I saw like hyaluronic skin tint, I was like, ooh, that sounds really nice and hydrating. But you know what? It may not just be ColourPop. I'm not a fan of skin tints. For me, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I would much prefer a foundation that I could sheer down the coverage of than a product that's so sheer, you have to build it up so much and then you just have a shit ton of product on your face, you know? It's your personal preference, man. Everybody wants something different out of their products and that's not for me. Not bad, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't reach for it again by the way it looks right now on first impression. I love ColourPop Snow Filter Concealer. It's the best concealer in my opinion. There's nothing that is quite as beautiful as it, in my opinion. Some people absolutely hate it. It's so polarizing. You either have some people that are like freaking ColourPop No Filter Concealer stands, or, or you have the complete opposite where that person's like, nothing's ever looked worse on my under eyes. And for me, I am in love with it. I just think it's amazing coverage. I love the hydration of it, but I'm not a huge fan of the other ColourPop complexion products that I've tried, like the stick foundation or the no filter foundation in the bottle. Neither of them just wowed me that much. That's surprising because I love most of ColourPop Pop's products so much. I'm just trying to make my skin look a little bit better in certain areas, even though that kind of messes with the tinted moisturizer because I'm gonna use Kathleen's palette and I really don't wanna like, I don't want it to look like shit because my skin doesn't look good. So I received this in the mail. This is from Hourglass. Look at this packaging. It's so unique for them. It's got like this kind of milky plastic look on the outside and then it's got the traditional Hourglass top. They get really dirty. That's my main beef with Hourglass products is that they're so pretty, but like, you know, this is such unique packaging for them. I feel in a way like it almost cheapens it a little bit with that plasticky look, but I see what they're going for because this is called the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Ghost. So this is like the ghost collection. And I think that's what they're trying to go for with like this kind of milky plastic look. I think it makes it look a little bit cheap, especially given the price of Hourglass. Let me see how much this costs. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> Well, this teeny tiny little palette right here, see the size of it? Looks bigger online, but it's about teeny tiny. Um, this is $80. 
Cobb. Palette featuring 100% vegan blush, bronzer, and six shades for a glowing complexion. This product is also vegan, cruelty-free, and gluten-free. Travel-friendly palettes, everything you need, start to finish, brighten, contour, highlight your skin in a single compact, featuring three exclusive shades of ambient lighting bronzer, ambient lighting blush, and ambient strobe lighting blush. This palette is formulated with photoluminescent technology to capture, diffuse, and soften surrounding light for skin that appears softer, younger, and lit from within for $80. <laughs> it better make me look like Natalie Portman. So I'm gonna use my little It Cosmetics brush for Ulta. This is the highlight brush. I like the size of it, it's really nice. If you're not able to get the Eco Tools brush that I always talk about, you might really like this one. I love my Hourglass Luminous Bronze Light Bronzer. So maybe I'll really love this. Given for $80 to have this kind of cheapy feeling packaging is kind of like, oh, come on. Okay, that applied a little more than I was expecting it to. Oh God. Yeah, my skin looks bad. <laughs> It looks bad. I didn't powder it at all. And now it's looking so dry around this area. Like I'm gonna pull you in and really turn down the lights so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Do you see what I see? And then this product, I feel like it's not doing it justice because I feel like this product would probably be really beautiful because hourglass products typically are, but it's clinging in such weird ways because of the product underneath it. So I saw somebody mention the other day that they were like, why do you turn the lights down to show the foundation or products on your face? Why don't you just film with the lights down so we can always see it like that? The thing is, is that anytime I do darken a video so you can see my skin better or whatever, I get countless comments of people saying that it's too dark. I've filmed a couple of videos with the lighting was a little bit darker and you can certainly see the texture and stuff like that in my skin more, but people were like, it's too dark, it's not bright enough. People are used to beauty lighting. This is what this is. This isn't like specialized beauty lighting, fuck's sake. It's like from lights from Amazon or whatever, but it does kind of smooth everything and blow everything out. And when you do turn the lights down, that's when texture shows up. It's a catch 22 because this lighting is really deceiving in a lot of ways. I don't use any sort of filters on my videos. I do know that there are some beauty people that do use skin filters. There's like a filter that you can buy and it'll like smooth out your skin. It's almost like an in real time skin smoothing tool like Facetune would do. And some people do use that, but that's why I turn the lights down because I want you to be able to see what it actually looks like on my skin. But that's why I turn the lights down. I'll turn them down to show you the skin texture and shit like that all the time. When I'm doing foundation, I want you to be able to really see how it looks on my skin. And with bright lights so that you can see everything else in its glory, skin just gets washed out and it always looks perfect. That's why sometimes I'll be like, oh my God, do you see how bad this looks? And people can't see. And that's because cameras are just deceiving. They're not the same as the human eye. And as much as we try, it's just not gonna be as good. So I always want you guys to be able to see and the best way I can do that is by turning the lights down. So that was the longest winded way of saying that. I hate that you can see the redness down here. I think it's personal preference though. Here's the thing. I've said this before too, and I said it in my Florence by Mills video. When something is marketed as a product, it needs to be reviewed as such. So I am not going to come into the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer and say, there's not enough coverage, it's too low coverage. It's not marketed as high coverage, but I do have personal preferences. And for me, it's just not enough coverage. Just same with the Florence by Mills. But if you're looking for a tinted moisturizer, you might like it. I feel like when I first put it on, it was feeling way too hydrating. And now it feels not hydrating enough. It feels like I've dried out, almost like the moisture has been sucked out of my skin. I feel like I'm gonna need to try this again in a different, capacity because I feel like for some reason it's looking ultra bad right now and I don't know why. So I love hourglass powders. I think they're so nice. This one is looking particularly bad on this side and I do think it's the base. I don't think it's the product from hourglass because I've never had issues with hourglass products being hard to blend or like patchy at all. I don't know. Maybe. It's hard to say. So that's that. And then I guess I'm gonna use the same blush from this palette, see what it's like. There is an hourglass blush quad that also launched. I'm gonna look this up to see the price, but it looks like this. It's called the Ambient Lighting Blush Quad Ghost. The blush palette quad is 58. <laughs> I'm gonna use the blush from this palette because most people aren't gonna go out and buy two things. I'm going to just test the little two blushes from the bottom. Like I've said before in this video even, I really like Hourglass products usually. I don't know if there's any that I hate. They're just high quality. They launch, I feel like, just the right amount to where each product feels really well thought out. I'm gonna see how these look up here at the top, like if they are highlighty. Oh, okay, they're very soft and subtle. Ooh. So these are not at all like traditional highlighters. Can you see that though? It does give a lit from within glow. I 
Oh, I've used powders like this from Hourglass before. I had the metallic strobe lighting palette, which was like very highlighty. Like it was, it wasn't like this. It was very much like a traditional highlighter. I still have it, and I love it. It's a good palette. But this is like, look at this. See how there's no glitteriness whatsoever. And really there's almost no shine to it either, but there is, it's like, do you see that? Huh, it's so unique and subtle. All right, if you're somebody that wants a highlight without any of the obvious I'm wearing highlight look, you might love this powder. Cause look how it does give a highlighted appearance to the cheeks and it does catch the light, but in the most natural way. Wow, yeah, these are so unique. You know what? That's really pretty. So do I feel like it's worth $80? Mm. I'm gonna use it again, 100%. There's something that I really covet with Hourglass products. I just really like them. And I feel like these powders are unique in and of themselves that you're not gonna find something very similar to that in another palette if you're looking for like that exact same like highlighter formula. I've never really tried anything like that before. I don't know if that's worth $80. I could justify 50 Five, but 80 is really high because this was sent to me by Hourglass in PR. If I saw this at Sephora and I saw that it were $80, I don't know that I would be able to like feel okay about it. You're rude when you do that. Never cut me off again. You're a stupid little bitch. Stop it. I don't know that I would feel stoked about purchasing that. And I don't know that I would be able to like make the purchase. Whew, that's really expensive. And then blush. Again, I love their blushes so much, but do I feel like they're worth like $60? You have to make that distinction for yourself. For me, I don't think I would buy that for $80 just because I'm such a cheap ass bitch, but I do like it from first use trying it. I feel like hourglass powders have a very uniqueness about them in the way that they blend really nicely and they look very natural. Hourglass to me feels like that girl that always looks so natural, but always so radiant and beautiful and you don't know why, that's the brand. It's like Glossier leveled up. I'm gonna move on to my eyes and I'm excited for this part because I have been waiting to try this for no particular reason either. It's not like I was waiting for any reason. I just haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to try it now. And this is the Kathleen Lights and ColourPop So Jaded Palette. This is their first mega palette. So you can see how big it is. Their normal palettes are like regularly tiny. They have like 16 shades in them. This one has 30. This is the palette right here. I'm sure you guys have seen this everywhere. I've never seen a palette more widely talked about, I feel. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. It's really pretty. Um, so it looks like there's a bunch of mattes in here. So you have a lot of options in that arena, but there's, ooh, ooh, I think we're gonna have to do that bitch today. We're gonna have to do this guy for sure with some of this shade up here, guaranteed. I think I'm gonna go with like these guys, this whole like gorgeous fall tone section down there. There's no mirror in the palette. You get this really beautiful, like precious stone, semi-precious stone collection up here. I really like the colors. I love this shade so much. So I might use some of that, 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 that with some, you know what? We're just gonna have a good old time. So I'm gonna use my ColourPop E2 brush. Ooh, I think I'm gonna start here with this shade, which is Citrine. It's all like gemstone themed, so I love that. I'm gonna kind of pat this on the inner corner right here. I feel like this is gonna be kind of reminiscent of my burger palette look that I did. You guys remember that? If you didn't see that, I'll link it up here. But I just love the shades in this palette are very up my alley of like that kind of more muted jewel tone for this time of year. I just love it so much. The thing about ColourPop is that really it's all about color preference because I've never used a ColourPop shadow that underperforms. They have beautiful payoff and pigmentation. They just are good. That's the thing about ColourPop. They're just good. Some products are a miss for me, like how this tinted moisturizer is, but that doesn't mean anything because ColourPop is such a good brand that like to have a miss every now and again is going to happen. All right, so I'm gonna take that green shade here, which is Jade right here. I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush here. This is the Sigma Small Tapered Blending Brush, the E45, and I'm gonna dip into Jade. And the reason I didn't take this on the fluffier brush is because I don't want this to get out of hand. Sometimes colors can get a little bit out of hand when you don't use them with precision and they can get, get up too high and then they start looking muddy and weird. I'm not gonna clean this brush off. I'm gonna dip it into a little bit of Garnet, which is right next to that shade. I'm just gonna dip a little bit into that and then run it along the edge up here. 
I hate it when there's like texture on my eyelids. I have like a zit on my eyelid. So annoying. I don't know how I feel about that shade being next to that green. I feel like it doesn't look that great. I'm gonna take that green up a little bit more. I took garnet before right here and now I'm gonna dip into this carnelian shade and kind of go over that garnet. I don't know, I'm just not that happy with the way that that red shade looks with the green. I feel like it needs a little more of like an orange. Yeah, I feel like that's a little better. And I dipped into a little bit more of that citrine color. And I'm just kind of running it along the outside of that carnelian just so that everything kind of blends in together and it's not like overly harsh in certain areas. So now I'm gonna take a little bit of that ColourPop No Filter Concealer and I'm just going to not cut my crease so much as I am just kind of laying down a base for the next shade. I guess I am cutting my crease. Just a gentle one, nothing too harsh. Like that. Now I'm gonna dip into, on the outer edge here, I'm gonna go into Tiger Eye. I think it's called Tiger's Eye, not Tiger Eye, right? I'm gonna put that right there so that I'm gonna gradiate it inwards. This shade is almost like the exact mixture of all of these colors in a shimmer. Then I'm gonna go into Sunstone. Just patting these on with my finger because I know that shimmers usually work better with fingers. And then I wanna take that shade Diamond here. I don't know if this is a, it feels like a super shock. Maybe I'll do a little smoky quartz moment. Okay, I'm gonna dip into stoned a little bit with that same Sigma brush that I was doing with the green and just sort of deepen up the outer corner right down here a little bit. And I'm gonna take my Tardis Double Take Eyeliner and just do a little, I'm not gonna do a wing, I'm just doing like a line up here so that my lashes can hide. But I think I'm gonna put a shade on top of this, like a shimmer. I love coating my liner in complementary color. I'll let that dry down a bit. There are two pressed glitters in this palette, which you guys know I'm not a fan of because they're not recommended for use around the immediate eye area. They're beautiful, but you're not supposed to use them on the eyes, so it like, it's like counterintuitive to put it in a palette, you know? Maybe I'll use the shade Ruby right here on that liner to kind of keep with the warmth of everything. And I think I'm gonna take it on like a tiny little brush and just pat it over the top. I think I'm gonna dip into Peridot a little bit too and just sort of mix it in with that. It's like that really vibrant green. Kind of give it like a goldy shift. I did get a bit of fallout when I did that, so just be aware of that. I'm gonna do my other eye off camera real quick and then we will finish off like the lower lashes and everything like that and like the lower lash line. We'll do something fun. I will be right back and we'll move on to the lips. Okay, so I threw some lashes on and I feel like I like it. I think the look is not my best eye look that I've ever done, but it's not bad. It's something that I would wear out and about. I don't feel like it's overly crazy or anything, but let's add some more. The thing about this palette is there's a lot of colors in here, so it was really difficult for me to choose, but I'm just going off of the outfit that I'm wearing right now, so it kind of made sense to like keep it going. But if you can tell, there's like some really beautiful, like this bottom quad down here would make a gorgeous eye look, or like all of these shades right here, these guys right here, these guys right here, you see what I mean? So you have a lot of different looks that you can do with this, like you could do a more purpley look, you can do kind of one like I did, or you can do blues, and so you've got a lot of different choices. So this is the choice that I made today with the palette, but you don't have to go in like this retro vibey kind of route. I think I'm gonna take the citrine shade and just really blow it out on my lower lash line. I really love these kind of shades. I think that's very clear. Taking that same E2 brush from ColourPop for this. I'm gonna take a little Sigma Small Tapered Blending E45 and I'm gonna take the color Stoned and I'm gonna run that right up next to my lash line. All right, and I think I'm gonna take a bit of the jade color as well and just kind of add a little bit of that olive hue right over the top of that. This is the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in the shade Call Me. Call me, 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 call
tight line with that as well. I like that eye look. I think it's pretty. This is kind of like you guys know the colors that I love and the eye looks that I love. This time of year is my favorite because it's like fully acceptable to be doing the most mustardy eye looks in the world. That's the eyes done. I feel like my skin is just too light. I don't know what it is about it. Like it's just not my thing. I am not a fan of the way that my skin looks at all. All right, so for my lips, I got this product from Hourglass as well. This is their new Confession Refillable Lipstick Duo. And I got, okay, absolutely strong. This is also a ghost product. So as you can tell, you've got like your one lip product here. And then you've also got a refillable thing. So it looks like you probably unscrew it. Oh yeah, you just pull it out of the container and then you put the different color that you want. Oh, crap, I just... Freaking, freaking son of a bitch. Okay, I just got it all. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna use this shade. This is the color You Inspire. Okay. This is kind of like a berry toned fall-ish shade. Ah. It's a really slim line lipstick. I'm gonna put some lip liner on because I'm not gonna be able to get to the edge of my lips at all. This is the ColourPop liner in the shade Ellery. The color of this lip liner does not fully match the lip product at all. It's not terrible, but it's not perfect. And I did a shit job of applying it. This is really messy. As you can see, like it's getting all over the inside of the cap here. And when I changed out the refill, either I did it wrong or it's just weird, but there's like a gap and I don't feel like that gap was there before. All right, now I'm gonna spray my face with the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Setting Mist and we will give my final thoughts. Where's my fan? Hello? Fan, where are you? All right, that is the finished face. Let's do a quick breakdown. I had somebody comment that these little uh, roundups are a little too long, so let's make it quick. Snappy. Skin product, you guys heard my thoughts. I'm not a huge fan. Way too dry looking, not enough coverage for my personal preference. As a skin tint, it's not my favorite. I prefer the Florence by Mills one to this one. Still, neither of them look great on my nose, even the Florence by Mills one. And this one is way better than the Glossier one, but still not my cup of tea. I guess maybe I'm just not a skin tint ass bitch, and I think that's actually what it comes down to, is that I just, myself personally always prefer more high coverage. I think that it's a totally fine product if that's what you like. If you like skin tints, you may like it and it's only $12 so it's not gonna break the bank massively to try it. If you are interested in it, you may wanna give it a try. I think ColourPop is sold at Ulta now, which is cool because if you're able to get it at Ulta, then you can return it to Ulta if it doesn't work for you. That one, I'm gonna say is a hard pass for me. I think my skin looks fine. I think the color I have is a little bit too light. This was the shade Light 7W. I could have gone a little bit darker for myself because I feel a little bit like a vampire. Maybe that's just the lip color in general, but not a fan. The Hourglass palette is pretty. I like it, I'll use it again. I don't think it's worth $80 just for myself personally. I feel like it's way overpriced for what it is. I think the packaging feels a little bit cheap, but again, I understand why they did it because it is the ghost collection. So they were trying to obviously go for a different look so that it was clearly different. And this is like a limited edition collection. My big gripe with Hourglass 2 is that after one use, it looks like that. I love the packaging and I think it's so pretty when they do this like shiny look, it looks so luxurious. Oh, hey, but at the same time, that doesn't look luxurious, you know? But that's all hourglass packaging, so that's just kind of the price you pay. But $80 is really high for that, so I'm gonna say for myself personally, I would pass on that one because I think you can get a very similar look with different products. I mean, even Fenty's packaging, look at that. Ugh. I think that the highlighters are the main thing that I feel like you can't dupe out really with anything that I've tried. The closest that I would say that I've been able to find is the Physicians Formula Shimmer Brick in Natural Nude, I think is what it's called. It gives a very similar look to this. That's actually one of my favorite highlighters that I've actually had to repurchase multiple times because it's so beautiful. I use the shit out of it. It's stunning and it looks very similar to this. So if you're going for a more budget option, I'd say the Physicians Formula one is really good. It's not exact and it's a little more shimmery than this, but still very lit within glow beautiful. And it has that same sort of like pinky whitish hue to it. So it's real similar. So the Hourglass palette is nice. I'll continue using it. I might end up loving it in the future, especially if I'd use it on a different base, I might like it more. I believe these ambient edit palettes are limited editions. So if you are really interested in it and you love the way it looks, you may 
want to pick it up because it's probably going to be gone. I know that last year I really loved the Ambient Edit Unlocked palette that Hourglass came out with and then you were never able to get it again. So Jaded palette from Colourpop. Colourpop palettes are across the board good. I love the shades in this. They're right up my alley. All these kind of muted, more like retro-y shades. You guys know I love, like literally look at my sweater. So this is right up my alley and I can see myself using this all the time. It's also Kathleen's palette. Kathleen Lights is one of the best people that I've met. She's wonderful. If you've ever wondered what's Kathleen like? Kathleen is exactly who she portrays herself as. She's even more quirky and hilarious in person. She's so funny. I just love her so much. I love the palette. I love the way the colors are, specifically all these shades down here. These are a little light up here. I'm not a huge fan of the two pressed glitters because again, like I've said in the past, I just don't know why ColourPop adds those into palettes when they're not intended to be used on the immediate eye area. Overall, I love the packaging. I think it's absolutely stunning. It feels very Kathleen Lights to me. And I think that the palette being these mega jumbo-y palettes that they're coming out with. I really like it. You're not going to be disappointed with ColourPop palettes in general if you've never tried them. Their eyeshadows blend seamlessly. They just work. The colors are what they look like and I just love the brand so I think that ColourPop is one of my very top favorite brands because they're so affordable. Their products are so high quality and you know what else I gotta say that I love? cardboard packaging. I don't love that they're using plastic packaging now for environmental reasons, obviously. So what's nice about cardboard packaging like this is that it is biodegradable. I love that this is a cardboard palette. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, ColourPop. And I think it's high quality and beautiful and I love it so much. So congratulations, Kathleen. I'm so proud of you for yet another ColourPop collab. Feels like basically Kathleen owns ColourPop now, so. Rightfully so, love the palettes. I did try this primer from ColourPop. I don't notice any difference, but obviously I haven't worn it all day or anything, but both sides look literally identical to me. If you are going to apply this foundation, by the way, I'd say a brush. Everything else looked like total butt shit. The lip product from Hourglass. Oh, it's pretty, I love the color. If you like the slimline tube, then you may like it, but I feel like it's not my favorite. It's really messy in there already because the cap is clear. You can just see all of the residue and it's not like I was being particularly messy about it. Not really a fan, I don't know if I would reach for this again, if I'm being honest with you. If you want a color like this, I mean, literally, I feel like this is such a dupable color. So you could find this in any sort of lip product. It's not like the most revolutionary color that's out there. It's beautiful and I love it. And the formula is comfortable and I like the finish of it, but I don't think that I would reach for this over any other lip product, especially with how the packaging is. I'm not a fan of that and how you can see through it and it just looks so dirty already. And for the price, which is $36 and that is for two different colors. Yeah, it's a limited edition duo featuring a confession ultra slim lipstick and one refill. So you get the other color in there, which I just, is mine broken? I feel like mine is broken or something because look, It doesn't like click in. Oh, I see, I see. It comes with like this little clear guy that you click onto the bottom because this is the refill and then you click, oh no. See dude, it doesn't, it's, it's shit. I terrible. Yeah, so I'm gonna say a big no on that one. I would not recommend that. Hourglass usually absolutely nails it with every product. That one I feel like is just a miss for me, specifically with the packaging. The product themselves is really pretty, but that's not enough for me to want to spend, first of all, $36 on a lip product, which isn't terrible for Hourglass, especially because you get two different colors. But the packaging to me is just like frustrating because I must have done something wrong here because as you can tell, like look, how this is like sitting up from the product and it like pulls out of here. Is this like a removable, I don't know, dude. It clips down in and then this, it, see what I mean? It doesn't like click down. I don't know, I feel like it's weird. Anyway, obviously you can tell my thoughts on that one, big no. And then the setting spray, I can't tell if it did anything. My face looks the same. And that's the that on that. That's the problem with a first impression a lot of times. I don't know how any of these products wear, but I feel like my face of makeup is pretty. I like the eyes. I could have probably gone a little bit crazier with the eye look. I'll definitely use this again in the future and I'll use some of the other colors in there to see what looks I can create with it that are different. I like this eye look a lot. These are the colors that I typically go for. I feel like I could have gone a little harder with it and I played it safe. Today just feels like a safe day. All right, well, I thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys liked this video and that it was somewhat helpful and letting you know if you've been interested in knowing what any of these products look like or how they perform. And if this was at all beneficial for you, please let me know. If you guys are looking for me to review or talk about any other products, I'm more than happy to do so. I've got a ton of new shit. Oh my God, brands are launching so much stuff right now. It is what it is. It's the holidays. All right, well, I thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't yet and I will see you at my next video. Bye! You know, you have some first impressions days that are like a winner, and then you have some that are a wiener. I hate myself. <laughs> Everything else is just kind of like, eh.
Let's go in with the new ColourPop Pretty Fresh. Um, like this would have been, I feel like a staple in people, in people. It would have been a staple in people. Ah! Well, bye, bye, bye. Where's a freaking light? Where's my concealer? Personal preference, man. Oh, hello? Something getting in my mouth for a glowing black time. Fix these bangs, what's going on, stringy? Clearliness, clearliness. For no particular reason. Mm. It's all stone themed, so like gemstone themed. It's all like stone themed, like gemstone themed. Oh my God, gigantic cat hair. Can you guys see that? That was in my eye. So I did get it. <coughs> Fine. The So Jaded palette. Okay, that was my phone. Cool. So I did try the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hydro Hyaluronic Hydro. If you are. Her, her, oh 